All right, guys, today we're going to be testing out the Reton Quiris. It's their new cargo bike that they've just now started selling for. It's on sale right now for $18.99, normally $20.99. It has a 450-pound payload. It's got a 750-watt rear hub motor. And you're definitely going to want to check out the hill climb test on this because it's one of the most powerful 750-watt motors I've tested. This hill that I put it on, I've never had a single-motor bike climb it throttle only it's always had to be an all-wheel drive bike and this actually does climb it with no problem whatsoever just throttle only um, like I said it's 450 pound payload and I love this cargo rack area especially if you're going to be carrying any kind of person on the back of this a lot of these bikes nowadays have aluminum racks with the aluminum legs you know what I'm talking about they get bent a lot of time in shipping and you can bend them right back with just your hand I'm a little leery sometimes about putting a child seat on there, but this one I would not be. You can see that thing's three quarter inch thick. It's all welded. It'll definitely hold it. Um, there are some pros to it. There are a few cons to it. So let's get into the bike and see what you think. Watch this. 15, 20, 25, 30, 31, 32.3 miles an hour right there. 32.8, and watch this. Those fast haste hydraulic brakes will stop on a dime. There's about a 20 foot skid mark right there, but that's at 32.3 miles an hour too so i have to give kudos to the fast ace brake model back to this bike this is the quercus it's from ratton it's their new cargo e-bike it's got a 750 watt rear hub motor on it it's a torque drive sensor on this one 20 inch by 4 inch fat tires this is the cement gray color and i'm just now taking it out for a review um, I've got an unboxing and a review on the specs up if you want to watch that. But we started with 100% battery. But here's the thing you're going to watch. I'm going to go right up here and I'm going to take a left and I'm going to go down a little bit to this steep hill that looks almost like a wall. And this bike, I've already done it. You're going to be absolutely amazed at the torque this thing has, at the power it's got. I've never had an e-bike go up this hill with just one motor. It's, it's impossible. It takes an all-wheel drive motor most of the time to get up this hill. I've, just, I've never had one. You can pedal up it sometimes with a few bikes, but I've never had one just do straight stop and all power up it. So, All right, so we're right here where I want to show you. I'm not sure if this camera is going to give this hill the justice it deserves, but this here is bigger than a 20% grade matter of fact you got to hold the brakes pretty good coming down it all right if you can see that hill there it's probably a good 20 feet higher than me it is almost like a complete wall in front of me it is steep now i've done this on several bikes with 750 watt motors i've done it on a thousand watt motors and never has a single motorbike ever made it up this hill throttle only you can pedal up them they all have good pedaling, especially torque sensor bikes. The Adventure 2 will get up this thing with pedaling. It won't get up with the with throttle only. All-wheel drive bikes, they will get up it. They'll just keep digging until it goes. But this is going to amaze you. Now remember, I want to show you. Let me put the kickstand down. Back up from a little bit. This is the Ratten Quirkus e-bike. 750 watt rear hub motor. I want you to see I've not changed bikes on this thing. And what we're going to do from a dead stop, get my pedal so I don't have to pedal. I just be comfortable. They won't strike the ground or nothing. All right, let's see what this will do. <laughs> That's crazy, ain't it? So watch this. Here's a little sleeper part. I'm going to pedal up it while I hold the throttle and see what it does. Oh yeah, good gracious. That's, that's powerful. That, for a single motor, that's powerful as can be. I'm not sure 
I'm going to try to get over here. I mean, I mean, this, this, this is not even like a, like a start and slant up. This is like, once the hill starts, it goes straight up. This is actually a levee. That's the, that's the shallower parts down there. So I know it'll do that part. But as it gets down here, you can see it really grades off real fast and it's real steep. And it's hard to, it's hard for a camera to give something justice on how steep this is. But this, this is a, this is like a wall in front of you. I mean, look, you just like you're gonna walk straight into it and you can see it's, it's a good 20 foot tall. As it gets to the top, it, it even increases on the slant because it's got to flatten off on top because there's a road up there. So that's, that's crazy. Now I wanted to start the video by showing you how fast this bike is and how powerful that 750 watt rear hub motor is on this bike. Now in the opening statement I did say this bike had a few cons and I'm going to go ahead and play those for you but I want you to stick around afterwards because one of the cons doesn't really matter. The second con you can fix on your own. The third con though Ratton's probably going to have to step in and help out with this one. So stick around and I'll show you on the third one how I've overcome it just a little by taking this out and riding it over a few days. Ratton advertises the Quirkus as a torque sensor bike. Now while out riding this, this is one of the cons I probably found on this bike. If you've ridden any other torque sensor bike, especially in this $2,000 range, you notice they usually have like four modes, Eco, Tour, Sport, and Turbo. In any of those modes, you're able to go from one mile per hour up to the max speed of that bike. It all depends on how much effort you want to put into the pedaling. On this bike, it's actually a little different. You have three modes. You have Eco, Normal, and you've got Sport Mode. Now, you'll see this PAS down here in the corner. You have five levels. One, two, three, four, and five. Every mode, the Eco, Normal, and Sport has five levels of assist. While out riding this bike, I found like if I'm in level one, I can easily pedal around 10 to 12 miles per hour. And then no matter how hard I pedal, I might get one more mile per hour, but it's generally not gonna go any faster. I have to actually shift up to the next pedal assist level to get faster. Again, level two is topped out, level three is topped out, level four is topped out, until you finally get into level five and you can go the max speed of the bike. So this is actually riding to me more like a cadence sensor bike now Ratton could probably fix this by either changing out these displays, sending a software update maybe through the online app or something, but I really feel like this probably needs to be addressed uh, and fixed in the future models. One thing I have noticed about this Ratton Quiris e-bike is this moped style kickstand. When you're riding the chain will actually hit and bounce off that and you'll hear that clicking going down the road and also the cable up here when you're going, it will bounce and rub against that cable right there. Now, I don't know, that cable is really thick, so I'll, it's just a matter of time just to see what it does. You know, we'll just have to keep a watch on that to see if it wears that any. You can change that around by going underneath this and coming back out looping it around if you know how to adjust your derailleur. Now, the reason I wanted you to stick around after the cons part is because I want to explain something to you. The chain hitting the moped style kickstand is not that big of a deal. If the clicking doesn't get on your nerves, it really doesn't get on mine because the most time I got a radio, but it really doesn't matter on this bike because Ratten actually sends two kickstands with it. They send the moped style kickstand and they send the regular side kickstand for it. So if that bothers you, you can easily just unbolt it, take it off and use it when you want to work on the bike because it does great for getting that rear tire off the ground. It's great for when you do the chain, when you're re-oiling it or cleaning it, or when you got to do something and have that rear tire off the ground. So. Thank you, Ratton, for sending me two kickstands with the bike. The other con where the chain gets close to the derailleur cable. You can fix that by taking the cable, going underneath that arm, and reattaching it to your derailleur. Just know if you do that, you may have to adjust your derailleur again. So know that before you take that off. To the torque sensor part of the bike, the way around that I found was picking which mode I wanted, like Eco, Normal, or Sport. I put it in PAS5, and I leave it. Um, I can pedal pretty good in that. Um, it's not as smooth as most torque sensor bikes. It will go to a range of maybe 10, up to the max speed of the bike, which is when you're pedaling, it's 22 miles an hour. Anything over 22 miles an hour is pretty much ghost pedaling. You're not really doing anything. It's a, it's a lot of ghost pedaling with that over 22, which is normal with most bikes anyway. 
this thing is so fast though man i'm always on the throttle so i think with the torque sensor part they might could send an over the air update for that display and correct that or they may decide to change the display on that i'm not real sure probably have to ask them but as far as torque sensor bike like i said this rides more like a cadence sensor bike and that's what if that's what you normally ride this bike's probably perfect for you but i normally ride torque sensor bikes so i'd like to see that uh tweak just a little bit so for the rat and quirkus this thing has way more pros than it does cons there's only one con that i can't correct on it and i'm sure rat and wheel um, i'm sure that'll be corrected as more and more people ride and, and request that but the pros on this bike are it's well made quality material the welds are perfect and i'm really particular about my welds but they've taken great care in the welds the ride on it is very smooth the front suspension has 80 millimeters of travel and it's very well adjusted i've ridden just almost exclusively hard tails and this rides really good and this doesn't even have a seat post suspension added to it yet the cargo area has plenty of room you can see here 185 pounds i mean i I would trust anything it says 450 i bet it does it like i said the only thing wrong with this bike is the torque sensor other than that it's well made a 48 volt 20 amp hour battery the range i got on this was in normal mode psa 5 i got 55 miles on that battery they claim 60 to 80. it all depends on the weight of the rider where you're riding a lot of things come into play on that if you've ridden batteries about this size you know about what range it's going to get now throttle only this <laughs> this thing's pretty powerful um about 30 miles and i but i was i was really i was really wearing it out too i mean i was hanging in that 30 mile an hour range so and even when the battery got low it was still hold that 30 mile an hour range so that was great the great thing about the display this thing does have cruise control once you leave your setting or your speed limit for five seconds it will stay to disengage that you just tap the brakes it'll shut it right off pedaling doesn't disengage it just the brakes but you can turn that off in the um, display so i like that they give you a choice of having cruise control or just shutting it off i would like to see ratten um, give out a better uh, manual on this um, display because there's a lot of advanced settings i think you could go in there and adjust and actually correct some of this torque sensor and it would help you out a lot so if you're listening ratten um, release some kind of download for this so we can get in there understand adjusting the voltage and what it's going to change on the speed limit i changed some and it, it helped it out a little bit but there's not a whole lot of um, information on this uh, display out there so it's a great bike you know you got a shimano shifter the only thing that's not shimano on it is their derailleur it's a uh, sun tour i uh, read a lot of reviews on it um, it's worked pretty good so far i did have adjusted just a little bit out of the box the brakes are fast a's i actually like them better than my tectros be honest about it um my the headlight is not that bright it's bright enough to see in front of you probably about like most bikes the tail light is super bright and i do like that because the car's coming up behind it's got blinkers on it plastic fenders you got the mag rims it's a 20 inch by four inch fat tire the kendra industrial sport they ride great when you add a half a bag of flat out to each tire this thing rides really good and talking about ride for a hard tail this thing is really smooth plenty of travel in the front got a lockout preload adjustment it is a hardtail but like i said it rides really smooth i've ridden hardtails more than anything and this rides really smooth and it doesn't even have a seat post suspension on it yet so that seat post suspension this thing's going to be really really smooth you know you can get an extra battery when you order it if you want to you could run two batteries so you can extend double your range with it it'll come on here for you they already both it on there you can buy an extra battery but you can't order this with two batteries this one don't it actually looks like it's made for a hub drive i like this because there's a lot of room in here for me to get to my controller and everything if i need to work on it these crank arms are a good three eighths thick solid they're a lot thicker than most this is a great bike very well made good components um, Ratten, when I've reached out to them and asked them, they've been really responsive. So, so far, customer service has been really good. I've not had to do anything to the bike, but the first couple of times I reached out, they did ask that I have a problem. And if I did, please call them or carry it to a local dealer and they'd have it fixed. So I didn't have any problems. They were just like, let me know if something's wrong. So 
when I've reached out to them, they've uh, answered real good. So maybe I'll get to review a few more of their bikes. Um, they've got quite a few of the Basalt I like too. So we'll just have to see. But this one right here is an excellent cargo bike. I do recommend it. If they fix that torque sensor, I 150% recommend it and will love it even more. So if you're listening, Ratton, work on that torque sensor um, and you're probably going to have one of the best one of the best cargo bikes out there because it's got great range sturdy as can be rides really good very comfortable for the price it's really good so um if you got any questions you can list them down below i know these reviews can't cover everything i'm just trying to give you the shout out about the main things you might look for it's a great bike so maybe i'll get to review rat more in the future but if not this is a great bike i recommend it it's on their site right now on sale for $18.99 and everyone have a good day. Yeah.